Do you find yourself more interested in the guy than he is in you? Do you wish you knew exactly what it takes to make a man fall in love with you? It takes five simple concepts. If you just understand these things, you'll be able to get any man you want to be madly in love with you and it won't even be his choice. I want you guys to first understand the idea of engaging emotions. An example of that would be this couple was paddling on a lake. They were going like kayaking together in still water, nothing crazy. And you can kind of tell like they're kind of outdoorsy people. And so, you know, him, her, her, the girlfriend is just sitting in the front of the kayak. She's taking a video and the boyfriend's in the back of the kayak. He's just kind of chilling and they're floating across this lake, floating across, floating across, floating across. And she says to him, oh, my big, strong man, look Look at those muscles can you paddle us can you paddle us faster look at your big strong muscles because they're just kind of sitting there right and she's trying to get him to paddle the boat but rather than saying oh can you please paddle why do you never paddle oh my gosh i gotta do everything around here oh my gosh why like we're not moving anywhere instead of complaining she says to him look at she's this is on the video look at my big strong man look at those muscles busting out of you you gonna paddle us to our destination baby you better paddle us you gotta paddle us to our destination look how big and strong you are. and that's literally how she's talking to him and lo and behold what happens he start he's like this he's like this when the when the when the video starts he's sitting like this he's like he's leaning back he's tired and then she starts, she starts engaging his emotions properly to elicit a response. And he starts smiling. He goes, uh, uh, and then what do you know? He starts paddling. He starts paddling. And he starts viciously paddling them to their destination. Okay. And the reason I give that example is because I want you to understand when you tap into your skill set, your superpower of being able to be emotionally intelligent, being able to understand how emotions will control, motivate, and inspire people to take action uh, in particular ways. You become so powerful that you're able to get whatever you want out of people and they're happy about it. That's, that's the craziest part is that for some of you, I know for some of you, when I, when we, when you come on the show, you think, oh, but this is manipulative. Oh, but this isn't right. Oh, but that's not genuine or, oh, that's wrong. That's not true love. But the reality of it is when this is done right, everyone is happy. That's the craziest part. You're happy. Because you get what you want from that guy and he's happy because he feels like everything he does was genuine to him. And you don't have to let him in on the magic trick. You really don't. You can just sit there and relax and chill having an understanding that you got the response you wanted and you got it the way you wanted. But he's happy about it regardless. But the approach is what got her her result because she could have complained and then maybe he would have argued or maybe he would have made excuses about why he's tired or why he can't paddle this time or why she should do it instead but her approach got her her, her result her desired result quickly we're gonna get go through some of the major emotions that are the most important for you to engage in the process of this dating stage why are they the most important to engage because when he feels those things intensely those are going to trigger the response of, oh, I want her or oh, I desire her, right? Those are the natural things. And you'll see when we go through all of these emotions, when you start thinking back to yourself, I also want you to be thinking about your own relationships, specifically the relationships that you've had with men, uh, the ones that you've liked the most. And when I describe these emotions, I want you to be thinking about those relationships with those guys and see if it correlates the same for you, meaning if you've had that same emotion towards the guys that you have really liked and vice versa, the guys that you didn't like as much, you didn't have that emotion towards them, then you know we're on to something here. And if you can engage and elicit that same response that you had when you really liked that guy, then you know you're capable of getting that same response response from him which is him being really interested in you i want you to understand when you go out on these dates with these guys we'll talk about euphoria in a bit we'll talk about why it's good to make him feel good that's pretty straightforward but what a lot of you are missing is the understanding that it's also good to allow him the space to miss you and even feel anxiety when he's not around you if you are constantly texting your man 24 7 all the time you're not even giving him the space to feel anxiety when you're not around what is there for him to be anxious about if you're texting him 24 7 
And then the only time you're not texting him is when you're with him or you're seeing him or you're spending time with him. I'm not saying, oh, you're married for 30 years, never text your man and never tell him, never update him on your life or anything like that. I want you to get rid of the mindset that texting is a form of getting to know someone or building a relationship with someone for a couple of reasons. One, it's a horrible way to build a relationship because you're not going to be building any type of relationship when you're texting a guy 24 seven. But in this case, specifically, when we're talking about how um, to force a man to fall in love with you, that he's not going to feel anxiety if you're around 24 seven, because the thing about it is you text guys because you feel like you're able to talk to them 24 seven and spend time with them 24 seven. But the crazy part about it is the guys also end up feeling like that after a while. And as they end up feeling like that, that they're talking to you 24 seven, how can he possibly feel any anxiety towards you or the relationship? Now, I want you to relate that to any man or guy that you've been dating or been in the talking stage with and if you've ever had anxiety or a lot of anxiety with that man specifically, would you say that there's a correlation between the guys that you've liked the most giving you the highest amount of anxiety? And this is why this is so amazing, because it's not really about what he wants what he likes or what he dislikes. It's just about what he responds to and how he responds to that. You can really get a man to feel anxiety if you're not texting him. Because the same way you've become accustomed to putting uh, a lot of onus on texting is the same way these guys end up putting a lot of onus on texting, right? And it matters to them. And they feel a little something if you're never going to be texting them back, if they always feel like you're too busy for them, if they always feel like you're doing something and they're not as important as the things that you're doing. Now, I know naturally you want to be like, but why would I want him to feel anxious? Why would I want him to feel like I don't like him? Why would I want him to feel like I'm too busy? Because when he feels like you don't like him as much as he likes you, when he feels like you're might be a little bit too busy, when he feels like maybe he said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing. All that happens is he begins to replay in his mind everything he's ever said to you, everything he's ever done with you, every date you've ever had. And he thinks and he thinks and he just goes in spirals and spirals thinking about everything you guys have been through, thinking about everything you guys have discussed, thinking about every date you've been on, whether he picked his fork up the wrong way or he made the wrong joke and you were upset with the joke and maybe you didn't like the joke, which is why you're not texting him anymore. Maybe you're on another date with someone you're more interested in and because you're more interested in that guy now, you're not going to want to go on a date with him anymore, right? And the same way, think about it, the same way you begin to spiral when you really like a guy and he's giving you a lot of anxiety, maybe because he's not talking to you as much, he's not texting you, he's not seeming as interested in you, is the same way you can give him anxiety and it will trigger that same response in him, except you know it will trigger that response, so you do it purposely. So it's really as simple as when we talk about giving anxiety, and I know you guys want real actions, it's really as simple as staying off your phone. When I say stay off the phone, I mean only use the phone as a scheduling tool. When I say scheduling tool, Hey, we, when are you free this week? Uh, Monday, I'm free on Tuesday. I got time to do this. Okay, we're going to hang out at this time. Okay, boy, I'm not free this time. Da, 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 we got to hang out at this time and set. Use it as a scheduling tool and nothing else. I don't care how much he texts you. You keep it to a bare minimum and you let him know, hey, I don't have too much time to text. I don't have too much time to be on the phone. I've got a lot of stuff to do and, it, and I just can't be on the phone. If you want the best version of me, we got to be out somewhere. If you see me in person, you'll get a much better version of me. I'm so talkative and I like spending in-person time with you. That's how you use the phone and that's how you use it to give him anxiety. Let's get to euphoria. You're not just trying to make him feel good all the time, 24 seven, because just like I, I, I said to you, right, you have to have a contrast of emotions that take him up and down that he can feel all of those different emotions intensely. What I'm specifically talking about is you want him to relate being with you in real life, three dimensional, like he can touch your skin, he can feel you, he can see you, you're not a projection, you're not on the screen, you're not on the phone, you're in front of him in three dimensional space. You want him to relate that with euphoria. I just finished telling you I didn't say you want him to feel euphoria 24-7, which means I don't want you to be around him 24-7. That loses its potency 
when you're around him 24 7. I also don't want you to be trying to give him euphoria when you're not around that he can begin associating you with the feeling of euphoria. Why? Because then you become like a drug when you're on a date with a man. The best way to make him feel euphoria is to make the entire date about him. It's crazy, right? Now, you're probably thinking, what? Make the entire date about him. Make the relationship about him. Make it all about him. Why would I make it about? I want it to be about me. I want to yap my brains out. I want to talk, 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 talk about me. I want to tell him how I feel. I want to tell him about my day. I want to tell him about everything I've been through. I want to tell him about my ex best friend and how she didn't, he, she didn't talk to me and how I hate her so much and how I blocked her. I want to tell her him about my past relationship. I want to, I want this to be about, why should I make it all about him? That's so stupid. I want it to be about no, what you want is for him to be at your mercy. We'll talk dates specifically, asking him questions, asking him questions, not just about his past relationships, past relationships were good, past exes, about himself, being genuinely interested in himself or pretending, I don't care what you do, right? But make him feel as if he is the most interesting thing on this planet. Some of you might say, isn't that just feeding his ego? Yes, it's feeding his ego, but it's also making him feel better about himself. People don't remember what you say. They only remember how you make them feel. And if you think about it, I don't just want you guys to, 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 to assume I'm right about everything and just, you know, I can just pull stuff out of my butt and it's right. I really want you to really think about this for yourself. And if it's true for yourself, think about all the people that you've been romantic with that have been in your life and that you've been in relationships with do you really ever remember every single thing that they've ever said or is the is the memory more clear about the emotions you went through and the feelings you had with that person and we're talking about making sure you're strategic about making the date about him that he can feel good about himself and subsequently feel good about you and the relationship now he leaves you right? Meaning that he's not with you, not, not spending time with you anymore. And when he thinks back to you, he can't really remember anything that you said on that day. All he has to go by is his memory of how he felt on that date, which is why I always tell you on dates, you should be quiet as a church mouse. And the only thing you really need to be doing is asking good questions asking follow-up questions on those good questions, and then making yourself look engaged in the conversation as he's letting you know more things about him. Now, I've gotten into great uh, dating questions to ask before. I don't want to get too deep into that because I want to stay focused on what we're, what we're discussing. But you're asking him good questions about his past relationship, his exes, his himself, where he wants to be, who he wants to be, where he's been, what he wants in life, where he's like how he views himself, his family, his his siblings, all that, everything, make it all about him and observe. Think about how it would feel if you've ever experienced it. Think about how it felt or think about how it would feel to feel like you're actually on a date with someone who is super genuinely interested in hearing about you and wanting to get to know you better and where you've been. Whether you tell them good stories or bad stories, they're just fascinated by you. Think about what you would feel internally when someone is that invested in you. All you begin to think about to yourself is how much you like that feeling of feeling like someone's actually invested in you, feeling like someone genuinely cares about you, right? Because we go about our lives, right? The same way you probably have felt it before. The men feel, feel it as well. We go about most of our lives feeling like people really don't care about us that much. And to have someone in front of you on a date with you that seems super invested in you and only cares about you and wants to know more about you, that is a great feeling. That's a euphoric feeling that can become like a drug because where else am I going to get that feeling from? Let's get to jealousy. I know that other people will tell you that jealousy is a bad thing and that in a healthy relationship, you don't make your partner jealous. I won't even come out and say that those people are wrong because you know what? I don't know everything. I could be wrong about everything. Maybe I'm just full of garbage. In my opinion, a healthy amount of jealousy is always good. And it's always good to have a reminder 
a kick in the pants that other people want your partner. Other people desire your partner. Your partner is a hot commodity. If you don't play your cards right, if you don't be as respectful as possible, if you start neglecting your relationship, if you start disrespecting your partner, there will be someone lurking in the shadows, waiting for his opportunity to strike on the hottest commodity around. And that anxiety that every time you look over your shoulder, there's a hungry wolf just waiting to get his claws on the meat that you got access to. Not that you're meat, but you you understand the analogy, right? And it just makes you sweat. Every day you wake up with just a little bead of sweat coming from your forehead, knowing that I got to make sure I am on top of things because there's a bunch of hungry wolves right behind me and they'll take it away from me if I blink too many times. And that's the feeling you get from jealousy. It's not really about necessarily, I feel like my partner likes this person or I feel like, I, you know, other men are able of take, capable of taking away my woman. She doesn't like me. She's uninterested in me. That's not the jealousy I'm referring to. The jealousy I'm referring to is that feeling you get when you sit there and you're like, why the hell is my partner enjoying any sort of time with another human being? Specifically, you know, as a man, in this case, with another man, why are you smiling? Why are you laughing? Why are you looking like you enjoy this conversation? Don't look like you. You should look like you're absolutely miserable if I'm not around. Why are you laughing and giggling? What's so? There's nothing funny. He's not a comedian. Don't laugh at his jokes, right? Don't don't be over here. Uh, I don't need to see all 32 of your teeth. Your teeth yellow and get hit. Er, you know the feeling. A great example would be going to an event or, uh, you know, let's say you go to a party together. And at that party, you know, there's some guy eyeing you down. He comes up to you and he's starting a conversation with you. And maybe your bo your boyfriend or your man at the time is talking to one of his guy friends. And he's starting a conversation with you. And then you guys are laughing and you're chatting. And rather than cutting the conversation short, you understand your man's over there watching or he's, you know, kind of close. And he can see you having a conversation. So you continue having this conversation with this guy. Nothing inappropriate. You don't talk about anything inappropriate. You don't even touch him. You don't even do, you know, you don't let him touch you. You're not doing anything that you wouldn't allow him to see or you wouldn't allow him to hear if he was part of this conversation. But you allow the conversation to go on knowing that he's seeing you have this conversation with the understanding that if he really is invested in you and he likes you, that's going to make him feel something. And the fact that it makes him feel something is good because what's going to happen is he's either going to come over there and he's going to grab you because he's tired of watching you laugh and giggle with someone else, or he's going to pop up like after the party, he's going to, this is how you know you, you, you it worked. He's going to pop up after the party. And when you guys are going home or something, you're going to be like, why are you having a conversation with that bum? Like what you, what y'all talking about? Like why y'all like that, that dude's a bum. Like that's the type of dudes that you like, why are you having a conversation with him? I don't understand. Like why you, why y'all laughing and giggling and stuff like that? Having, having a conversation, bro, y'all over there standing on the wall talking for like 20 minutes. I seen you there. Like, just, just let me know. Like, like what that dude's a bum. I hope you don't think we on it. Like if you hear him start talking like that, then you know you touched you touched a nerve. That's good. Because I want you to remember, let's think back to what, why we're here. You, we're talking about how to force a man to fall in love. I want you to think about when we're talking about falling in love and falling for someone and the intensity of the emotions that you feel when you're actually truly invested in someone. It's not always going to feel good to be so intensely invested in someone. But that's a good thing. I don't want you to be in such fear that, oh, if I don't ease his his anxiety all the time or make him feel secure constantly, then he won't like me. That's actually the opposite and wrong way of thinking. It's the same reason why the guys you don't like are the guys that like you the most because you care the least about being liked about by them, which is why you present yourself in a particular way that you don't really care 
about making him feel secure. You don't really care about being liked. You don't really care about being accepted. You just do you. And the same thing you can do towards your relationship, even with the guys you like, understanding that as you just do you and don't attempt constantly to try to ease his anxiety and try to make him feel more secure and allow him to feel his jealousy, you actually end up winning because now he becomes more and more and more invested in you. Now I want to discuss a very interesting concept, which is inspiration. There's two versions of inspiration. First version, which is the inspiration that he sees things in you that he feels inspired by that he also would love to embody, whether it be your generosity, the way you carry yourself, the way you go about life, the way you're, you're, you're um, so secure in yourself or whatever it may be. He should be inspired by something about you, something about your personality or your character. The number two thing when I talk about inspiration is your ability to inspire him to reach higher heights than he even thought was possible within himself. The second one is a bit more complicated. I'll get to that one last. But first, let's tackle inspired in seeing things in you that he feels he would love to embody. You want to be inspiring him to change his own ways because he sees the path that you're on. Let's imagine an idea like me and you are dating and I'm like a party guy, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this part of my life and da, 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 right. Like I just, I, I want to go out and, you know, just to say for the sake of argument, I love to go out with friends on the weekends. I love to get drunk and do all this stuff. And you're not like that rather than trying to figure out how you can be more like him in the process of dating him, right? Let's just imagine you were dating someone that was like that. He's a big partier. I want you to be actively focused on how you can actually present yourself as someone who is not like that and not interested in being like that. Because then what happens is you become a source of inspiration to in that he strive wants to strive to be more like you. I know it sounds very strange, but when he can be inspired by you, and the way you carry yourself. What ends up happening is if he's truly invested in you, he now starts feeling like I need to better myself to get on her level. The inspiration to become better is because you are better. And if he wants you, he feels that it is necessary for him to upgrade himself in order to be your partner. And so you get an increasingly better, more focused version of him because of how you're inspiring him to be a better man, which is why you hear a guy say, you inspire me to be a better man, or you inspired me to be a better man. That's part of what they're referring to. Now, the other part of what uh, people or men are referring to, when we're talking about making him feel inspiration, is the inspiration to reach higher heights. Now, when we talk about the inspiration to reach higher heights, it's not really about being more of a man or being his man best friend that you can motivate him and help him beat his chest and, you know, yeah, you're the man and all that good stuff. It's about understanding how your femininity can inspire him to do things he didn't even think was possible. I gave you guys an example of engaging emotions in a way that elicits a response um, earlier, and it actually has a lot to do with inspiration. And uh, this uh, girl was taking a video in front. She's in the front of the kayak. Her man's in the back of the kayak. And she wants her man to paddle faster so they can get to their destination quicker. But rather than complaining and saying, why don't you paddle faster? You're so lazy. Oh, my God. I got to do everything. She's got a paddle in her hand. Okay, she can paddle too. Why are you so lazy? Why do you make me do it? You're supposed to be the man. Can't you be a man? Can't you be the one that paddles us? She didn't say that. How she approached it was when she took the video, she said, Ooh, look at you. You such a big, strong man. Look at those muscles. And he gets all giddy and excited. And what do you know? He starts vigorously paddling that boat, getting them to their destination. Okay. And that's an example of inspiration and in how you can use your own femininity to inspire men to be more of themselves or a better version of themselves. And the reason I say you want to be eliciting an ins the, the inspiration as one of the intense emotions he feels when he's around you and he spends time with you, because think about this, the same way I talked about euphoria. And if he feels like he's getting something from you, someone that truly cares and is invested in him that he cannot get from anyone else. Think about how addicting it is to feel like I'm Superman when I'm around you or I can do anything 
possible when I'm with you because of the way you inspire me to be better. That also becomes an addiction. Let's say you had a particular uh, pre-workout that you always take. And every time you take that pre-workout, you're like over the moon, you lift a thousand pounds, you go crazy in the gym. And every time you don't take that pre-workout, you're not quite as good. It's going to grow your attachment to that pre-workout. You're actually going to have a lot of anxiety if you don't have that pre-workout because you're going to feel like I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do properly. It's the same idea. If I feel like I'm always inspired when I'm around you or I feel like I'm always capable of doing more with myself because at the end of the day, if I'm inspired being around you and I end up doing more for myself, I get to look at myself in the mirror and be more proud about myself because I did the thing and I reached the goal that I never thought I could reach. But that the process of reaching that goal is also very closely related to the fact that I was with and around you. So now I start to associate the feeling of success and reaching my goals and getting to where I need to go with being around you. So what do you think that does to me? Now I want to be around you more, okay? And now I know I'm talking on a level, for those of you who are a little bit younger, this might not make as much sense to you because you're like, inspires him, be a man, mask, well, I just don't get it. Why would the, why does that matter? Why, why does that make guys like, trust me. As you grow older and you mature in your relationships, you'll understand why and how that is so important because your ability to inspire him uh, is very vital to the delicate balance that is masculine and feminine energy. 